Joining me now is Republican Congressman Mike Waltz of Florida. He's a member of the House Armed Services Committee and the first combat decorated Green Beret elected to Congress. Hi, Congressman. Good to see you. So. Hi, Pam. Yeah, uh, it's just so awful to see this video coming in. I'm sure you've seen that horrific new video showing the, the Russian military strike killing a family, including two children at an evacuation point in the city of Arpin. We're going to hold off on playing it again because it is so disturbing and, and frankly enraging. But what is your reaction to what you're seeing? The attacks of civilians seem to just keep getting worse. Does there yeah. come a point where it's time to do something more militarily in your view? Well, Pam, sadly and tragically, I think this is uh, this war is going to get far worse uh, before it gets better. Uh, if you look at the history of Russian invasions from Afghanistan to Chechnya to Syria, uh, this is this is right in line with how they operate when their precision strikes and their attempt to decapitate uh, the Ukrainian government didn't work. They start resorting to siege warfare, scorched earth bombing and shelling of civilians in order to break the back of the Ukrainian people. They did the same thing in Grozny and Chechnya. They did the same thing in Aleppo, where they literally sent missiles into hospitals uh, to, to break the Syrian people. Uh, I, I want to see uh, war crimes declared on uh, Putin's senior generals uh, and on Putin himself. Uh, we need to ban Russian oil. Uh, that needs to come like yesterday. Uh, and and I think we need to drastically accelerate the amount, uh, the speed with which it's arriving and the sophistication of the weaponry that we're providing the Ukrainians. So you mentioned the Russian oil. There is a bill to ban the import of all Russian oil to the United States that is gaining bipartisan support on Capitol Hill. The White House yeah. says it is seriously considering it. Americans, as you well know, are already dealing with the high prices right now, high gas prices. So what more right. can be done to mitigate the blow to American consumers? Well, I'm glad that we're finally seeing bipartisanship on, on one, on Nord Stream, but then two, on banning Russian oil. Uh, sadly, it wasn't that way before. Uh, uh, before the invasion, when the administration was actually lobbying Democrats on the Hill to not impose uh, these sanction sanctions, which I think would have been had much more of a deterrent effect. But to your point on higher gas prices, which is absolutely driving inflation here at home, uh, the answer is to unleash American energy. Uh, we need to reduce. We need to eliminate the ban on federal lands. Uh, we need to begin unleashing American gas. Uh, by the way, American gas is far cleaner than Russian gas. It, Russian gas is some of the dirtiest form uh, in the world. So from an environmental standpoint, as a bridging fuel, uh, that makes sense. Uh, but look, what we don't need to do, Pam, this is where I'm really disturbed. We don't need to turn to Venezuela, where the Biden administration has envoys right now uh, to that murderous thug of a regime and have them start pumping oil and have them flush with cash. And what I'm really worried about is the looming Iran deal. I mean, it is absolutely insane, Pam, that we are sanctioning Russia as they murder Ukrainians and bomb civilians. But yet Russia is the go between between the U.S. side and the Iranian side in this Iran deal. How can we possibly trust them as an honest broker? And what concessions are we making uh, in that, you know, in order to get one deal in terms of what, what we should be doing uh, to sanction Russia vis-a-vis -vis Ukraine? There's a lot you said right there. Um, I am going to pinpoint one thing you said, talking about the, the banning mm -hmm. Russian oil. You said more should have been done sooner. Mm -hmm. It could have been had a deterrent effect. But do you really think anything? Do you think that would have really deterred Putin from his clear obsession of, of invading yeah. Ukraine? I mean, and, and that's a fair question, right? But I do think when I was out there last year, Republican and Democrat uh, members of Congress were saying sanctions should be in place then uh, and that we should have been providing the Ukrainians the stingers, the anti-ship missiles, the harpoon anti-ship missiles uh, and uh, the other arms that they were asking for back then. And I do think it would have confused uh, Putin's calculus. It may have delayed his calculus a fair question whether it would have actually deterred him, but I can tell you what, if the Ukrainians had Stinger missiles on rooftops on day one of the invasion versus day seven, I think they'd be in a far better place right now. I want to ask you about President Zelensky. Uh, he has said that he wants to stay in Kyiv despite rescue offers from the U.S. 
Why do you think it's so important for Zelensky to get to Western Ukraine, get out of where he is now and to stay alive? Well, you know, mission accomplished, and I give him enormous credit. I think he's turning out to be a, a 21st century Churchill. He has rallied the world. He has rallied Europe. Uh, he has rallied his own people. Uh, he is, But he has now turned into a symbol. And if you look at history, George Washington kept our revolution alive by staying alive. Uh, and I worry every time he's showing up on a TV screen, every time he's coming on the Internet, uh, the Russian intelligence services are doing everything they can to geolocate him and kill him. Uh, and I do think his death will be a real blow to the morale of the Ukrainian people. Uh, at this point, I would like to see him go to ground. And at this point, his mission is to live and to continue to serve as a symbol of resistance. Um, based on our research, your home state of Florida holds roughly $300 million in investments in Russian companies. Does Florida need to cut its ties with Russia and Russian businesses immediately? Yeah, so I, I would uh, I would certainly support that, not only with Russian businesses, but Florida has been active uh, in divesting its state pension fund from Chinese businesses, uh, particularly uh, the Chinese stock market, which hosts many Chinese uh, defense industry uh, defense industry companies on that market. We do not need to be funding these murderous dictators that mean us harm and that mean to replace uh, the United States who is leading uh, the world's democracies with their version of totalitarian regimes. Uh, and the sad thing, Pam, is it is our money through our state pensions, through Wall Street, through our sports industries, uh, and certainly through our oil and gas purchases that are funding both the Chinese and the Russians. And I think we need to take a much tougher stand when it comes to our wallets. I want to ask you a viewer question before we let you go. You had mentioned that you believe that some of Putin's top generals should be charged with war crimes. There are calls mounting for Putin to be tried for war crimes after attacking Ukraine without provocation, attacking hospitals, allegedly using these cluster munitions. This viewer asked, could he actually face accountability for his actions? That's a big question on people's minds right now. Well, you know, there was a very interesting report, and I'm going to ask for briefings on it in Congress this week that anti-war elements within Russia's FSB, which is the successor to the KGB, it was those anti-war elements that have been tipping off Zelensky's security team. Uh, and, and that could be a real indication, indicator of some dissent uh, within Putin's national security apparatus. So I think we should add to that by making the leaders of those, of those agencies and the generals uh, put them on notice uh, and let them know that they, there will be war crimes, uh, and they be, need to begin saying no, particularly if Putin goes an extra step in terms of attacking a NATO country or, which is in their doctrine, to use a tactical nuclear weapon or those just short of tactical nuclear weapons, which are the thermobaric, uh, you know, vac, so-called vacuum bombs. We need to put doubt in his inner circle's mind. We're going after the oligarchs' money. But let's also uh, let's also sow seeds of doubt in his generals uh, and start okay. charging them appropriately. Congressman Mike Waltz, thank you for your time tonight and offering your perspective on this unfolding war in Ukraine.